Carol's cries echoed through the room. Oh God, why me? Why me, God? What did I do to deserve this unbearable pain and punishment? Susan arrived at the emergency ward, her heart heavy with fear. The doctor's words cut through her like a knife. Madam, we did our best, but you lost her. Susan's scream was primal, her body slumping against the doctor. No, no, this can't be happening. The medical team rushed to her side, trying to comfort her. I'm so sorry, madam. We did everything we could. Forty-five minutes later, Susan woke up, her eyes blurry with tears. Please, my daughter, please, she whispered. The doctor tried to console her. This is not the end of your life, madam. You will get through this. But Susan's pain was too raw. You don't understand. The agonies I endured before Lorene was born. She was my only joy. The nurse tried to reassure her. God will give you another child, Ma. Please be strong. Susan's call to her husband, Gabriel, was laced with tears. Lorene is dead. Oh, Gabriel, my princess. Gabriel's voice was incredulous. What happened? Who killed my daughter? Susan switched to a video call, showing him Lorene's lifeless body. Gabriel's anger was palpable. Who did this? I'll slaughter them. Susan revealed Carol's betrayal, and Gabriel's fury intensified. Lock her up. Don't feed her. I'll deal with her when I get back. When Susan returned home, Lawrence approached her, innocent and unaware. Mommy, where's Laureen? Is she okay? Susan's gaze fell on him, her eyes filled with tears. Laureen is gone, Lawrence. She's not coming back. Lawrence's eyes widened. But why, Mummy? What happened? Susan's voice cracked. Carol, she killed your sister. Lawrence's face contorted in confusion. No, Mummy, that's not true. I was the one who... Susan's hand raised, silencing him. Don't lie, Lawrence. Carol did this. She spotted the tablet on the table, still recording. Oh, my princess's tablet, she whispered, picking it up. As she made to switch it off, something caught her eye. The video was still ongoing, showing the events of the tragic afternoon. Susan's gaze was glued to the screen, her eyes widening in horror as she watched the game, the argument, and the tragic end. She saw Lawrence, her own son, holding the knife, and her heart stopped. She felt like she'd been punched in the gut. Lawrence, what have you done? She whispered, her voice trembling with anger and grief. Lawrence looked up, tears streaming down his face. Mummy, I didn't mean to. I was just playing. But Susan's anger was too much. She turned off the tablet, her hand shaking with rage. You killed your sister, your own sister. Susan's anger boiled over and she lashed out at Lawrence, her hands slapping him repeatedly. You killed your sister. You took my princess away from me. Lawrence cowered, trying to protect himself from his mother's blows. Mummy, please, I didn't mean to. But Susan couldn't stop. She was consumed by grief and rage, and she beat Lawrence mercilessly, tears streaming down her face. Where was I? Where was I when this happened? I should have been here to protect her. She screamed, her voice echoing through the kitchen. Lawrence fell to the ground, covering his head with his hands, but Susan didn't stop. She kicked him, punched him and slapped him, her anger unstoppable. Finally, exhausted and spent, Susan collapsed beside Lawrence, her body shaking with sobs. My princess, my baby, gone. As she finished beating Lawrence, Susan stormed away, her anger still simmering. My princess, she muttered, pacing around the kitchen as she thought and planned. She knew she had to protect her son no matter what. I'll never tell anyone that Lawrence killed his sister, she thought. If I do, they'll execute him for killing the heir to the Smith Empire. And then there was Gabriel, her husband. If he found out that Carol had warned her about letting the children watch that movie, he would kill her on the spot. Susan's mind racing, she devised a plan. I'll accuse Carol of killing Loreen. That way, she'll be put to death instead of my son. But as she thought about her plan, Susan's conscience kicked in. What kind of problem have I caused for myself? I wish I'd known a day like this would come. I could have listened to Carol last night. Regret washed over her. Pride and negligence have landed me in this mess. I lost my daughter because of my carelessness. How am I going to survive without her? After her lament, Susan deleted the video on the tablet, ensuring that Gabriel wouldn't see it when he returned. 
she knew she had to cover her tracks no matter how painful it was. Susan grasped Lawrence's ears, her grip tight. Junior, listen carefully. If your father or anyone asks about Laureen's death, you'll tell them this. You came to my room to return my phone after your call with Daddy. You heard Laureen screaming, and when we went downstairs, we saw Carol trying to escape with her belongings. Lawrence's eyes welled up with tears. But Mummy, I don't want to lie to Daddy. Susan's expression turned cold. You'll do as I say. Now repeat the story. Lawrence hesitated, then spoke in a trembling voice. I went to your room to give you your phone, after Laureen and I talked to Daddy. I heard Laureen screaming, and when we went downstairs, we saw Nanny Carol trying to run away, and Laureen was dead on the ground. But then Lawrence's face contorted in confusion. Mummy, the uncle in the movie woke up after the fight. Why didn't Laureen wake up? Susan's anger flared again and she slapped Lawrence. You stupid boy, you'll ruin everything. Lawrence cowered, tears streaming down his face. I'm sorry, mummy. Susan's voice dropped to a menacing whisper. Lawrence, listen to me. If you tell anyone what you did to your sister, I'll kill you just as you killed Laureen. Do you understand? Lawrence nodded, trembling. Y yes, mummy. Susan's eyes blazed with fury. Get out of my sight, stupid boy. The next day, Gabriel's family arrived, seeking answers for Laureen's tragic death. Susan began her fabricated explanation. I was getting ready to take the kids to school when Gabriel called. I gave them the phone, then returned to my room. Five minutes later, Lawrence brought me the phone, and as he left, I heard Laureen screaming. We rushed downstairs and I caught Carol trying to escape with her belongings, blood on her hands and clothes. Gabriel's mother's anger boiled over, and she slapped Carol, her hands around her neck. Why did you kill our innocent girl? Carol, overwhelmed, could only cry and stammer. Susan's father accused, You're evil! How can we believe you didn't kill Laureen when you were alone with her downstairs? Gabriel's father declared, This woman is a witch! She tried to kill Laureen spiritually but failed, so she did it physically. She must be punished severely. Gabriel's mother agreed. Wait until Gabriel returns from abroad before taking action. Carol was returned to her room, locked in without food, her cries echoing through the day and night. Gabriel returned from his trip, his heart heavy with grief. He went straight to the mortuary to see his daughter's corpse, the memory of her smile and laughter now forever etched in his mind. When he arrived at his compound, he rushed to his room, grabbed a gun, and forced open the door to where Carol was locked up. I give you five seconds to explain why you killed my only daughter, he demanded, his voice shaking with anger. Carol, exhausted and overwhelmed, begged to die. Please, I just want to die. I'm tired of suffering. Please kill me. Gabriel was taken aback by her words. He looked at her with teary eyes, his anger momentarily subsiding. He left the room, seeking answers from Susan. Susan, can you tell me what happened to my daughter? He asked, his voice firm but laced with pain. Susan repeated her fabricated story, but Gabriel was unconvinced. He went to Lawrence's room, finding him crying over his sister's pictures. Lawrence, buddy, you're the only person I trust in this house. Look at me and tell me what happened to your sister, Gabriel said, his eyes pleading for the truth. But Lawrence... Remembering Susan's warning, hesitated. Daddy, I... I don't know what to say. Gabriel's expression turned stern. Lawrence, tell me the truth. What happened to your sister? Just then, Susan knocked on the door. Lawrence, sweetie, please open the door. I brought you your favorite juice. Gabriel's eyes narrowed. I'm having a serious discussion with him, Susan. Please leave us alone. But Susan lingered, trying to listen in on their conversation. Gabriel knew she was trying to control the narrative, but he was determined to uncover the truth. Please, buddy, tell me what happened, Gabriel urged Lawrence, his voice softening. But Lawrence, afraid of his mother's wrath, continued to lie. Daddy, I... I heard Angel screaming, and then I saw Nanny Carol trying to run away. Gabriel's face fell, his heart heavy with sorrow. So it's true, he whispered, his mind racing with thoughts of revenge. But as he rushed to Carol's room, intent on killing her, her plea stopped him cold. Please, sir, before you kill me, 
tell your wife to give me my phone. I want to call my only surviving child and say my final prayer. Gabriel's anger faltered, replaced by a deep sadness. He looked at Carol, seeing the desperation in her eyes. Why should I believe you? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Carol's eyes welled up with tears. Because, sir, I am a mother too. I know how it feels to lose a child. I would never hurt Laureen. I loved her like my own. Gabriel's gaze lingered on Carol's face, searching for any sign of deception. But all he saw was genuine sorrow. He felt a pang of doubt, wondering if he had misjudged her. He left the room, his mind reeling with questions. Why was Susan so adamant that Carol was guilty? What was she hiding? He needed time to think. Gabriel walked to the parlor, his feet heavy with grief. He sat on the ground, surrounded by the silence of the room. His thoughts swirled around him like a stormy sea. After a while, Lawrence came out and approached him. Daddy, please can I talk to you? He asked, his voice hesitant. Gabriel looked up at his son. What is it, Lawrence? Lawrence's eyes pleaded for help. Daddy, please can you give Nanny Carol some food? She's been locked up for so long without eating. Gabriel's heart ached. He knew Carol was suffering. Go tell your mother to give her food, he said, his voice firm. Lawrence nodded and left, but soon he returned, looking crestfallen. Mummy shouted at me and told me to leave her presence, he said, his voice trembling. Gabriel's anger flared up again. He stood up, determined to confront Susan. I'll go myself, he said, his voice resolute. He walked to the kitchen where Susan was preparing a meal. Susan, please give that poor woman food. She's been locked up in that room for over five days without eating, he said, his voice firm but controlled. Susan turned to him, her eyes flashing with anger. Gabriel, are you okay? Why would you advise me to give food to someone who killed our only daughter? Gabriel's expression remained calm. I don't care if she killed my daughter or not. Give her food, Susan. What? Gabriel's voice remained calm but firm. Susan, I'm asking you to give Carol food. She's been locked up for too long without eating. Susan's expression turned incredulous. You want me to feed the woman who killed our daughter? Have you lost your mind, Gabriel? Gabriel's eyes locked onto Susan's. I don't know what happened, Susan, but I do know that Carol is suffering, and I won't stand for it. Susan's voice rose. You're taking her side? After what she did to Laureen? Gabriel's voice remained steady. I'm not taking anyone's side, Susan. I'm just asking for basic human decency. Susan's face twisted in anger. Fine, don't come crying to me when she kills again. Gabriel's eyes narrowed. That's enough, Susan. Give her food, now. Susan's eyes flashed, but she knew Gabriel's expression. She stormed out of the kitchen, returning with a plate of food. Here, feed her yourself, she spat slamming the plate down on the table. Gabriel rushed to the parlor, answering Raymond's call. Hello, Raymond, where are you? I'm in your parlor, Raymond replied. Okay, please wait for me. I'll be there shortly, Gabriel said, ending the call. As he entered the parlor, Raymond stood up, concern etched on his face. Gabriel, what's going on? You look troubled. Gabriel took a deep breath. Raymond, my daughter, Laureen, she's gone. Raymond's eyes widened. What happened? Gabriel explained, his voice cracking. Susan said Carol. Her nanny killed her. But I'm not convinced. Raymond's expression turned skeptical. This is quite unbelievable. Where is Carol now? Gabriel led Raymond to the room where Carol was being held. Her face was swollen from crying. After they left the room, Raymond spoke up. Gabriel, I find it hard to believe Carol killed Laureen. She looks incapable of harming anyone. Gabriel's expression turned grim. Don't judge her based on appearance, Raymond. You never know what's in someone's heart. Raymond nodded. I agree. But what do you plan to do with her? Gabriel hesitated. I don't know. I'm confused. I tried to kill her, but I couldn't. Raymond's voice was calm. Hand her over to the police, Gabriel, and bury your daughter. Gabriel nodded. That's what I intended to do. But my family, they'll want her executed, following our tradition's rules. Raymond's eyes narrowed. What rules? Gabriel's voice dropped to a whisper. As you know, I'm from a royal family. 
Our law states that anyone who kills a member of our bloodline must be executed, either by stoning or burning alive. Raymond's expression turned somber. I see. The king is aware. Gabriel nodded. Yes, and they're waiting for my return. The circumstances are beyond my control. Raymond placed a reassuring hand on Gabriel's shoulder. Do your best, Gabriel. Leave the rest to God. The next day, Dominic, Susan, and their families gathered at the palace, their faces somber. Susan began explaining the events surrounding Laureen's death to the king and his cabinets, her voice trembling. The king listened intently, his expression grave. After Susan finished, he summoned Carol, who was brought to the palace and seated on the ground, her eyes cast down. Can you tell us why you killed the little girl whose parents hired you to care for? The king asked, his voice firm but measured. Carol shook her head, tears welling up in her eyes. Your Majesty, I did not kill her. I was getting my things to leave the house that morning when I heard Laureen screaming. I rushed to find out what happened, but I couldn't find her or her brother. When I went to the kitchen, I saw her lying dead, and I became extremely scared. The king's expression remained skeptical. So when you came downstairs to see what happened to the little girl, did you meet anyone? He asked, his voice slow and deliberate. Carol hesitated, her eyes darting around the room. No, your majesty. Did you find the door open or locked? The king asked, his eyes narrowing. The door was locked, your majesty, Carol replied, her voice barely above a whisper. The king leaned forward, his eyes boring into Carol's. But when you discovered the girl you were caring for, lying dead on the ground, why didn't you rush to inform her mum instead of attempting to run away? Carol's voice trembled. Your Majesty, I was extremely scared because of a dream I had the night before the incident, which was exactly what happened that day. I tried to tell Madam about the dream, but she didn't pay attention to me. Susan snorted in disgust. She's lying, Your Majesty. She's trying to cover up her crime. The King's gaze turned to Susan, his expression stern. Is this true? Did Carol try to warn you about a dream she had? Susan's expression turned defensive. No, Your Majesty, she's making it up. Carol's eyes flashed with anger. I'm not lying. I came to your room twice, begging you to listen to me, but you ignored me and pushed me out. Susan's face reddened. Which room did you come to? Madam, you know what I'm talking about, Carol cried out. Susan's face twisted in anger. You're a liar, Carol. You're trying to cover up your crime with your fake dreams and stories. Carol's eyes welled up with tears. I'm not lying, Susan. I swear on my life. I didn't kill Laureen. Susan sneered. Save your tears, Carol. You're not fooling anyone with your crocodile tears. Carol's voice cracked. You don't understand, Susan. I loved Laureen like my own child. I would never hurt her. Susan's expression turned cold. Don't pretend to be something you're not, Carol. You're a murderer, and you'll pay for what you did. Carol's face contorted in anguish. I didn't do it, Susan. I didn't kill her. She sobbed, bursting into tears. The king's expression remained stern. Enough, Carol. Your tears won't save you from justice. Susan's voice dripped with triumph. You see, Your Majesty, she's guilty. She can't even look us in the eye and deny it. Carol's body shook with sobs, her eyes streaming with tears. I didn't kill her. I didn't kill her, she repeated, her voice barely audible. The king's guards moved forward, their hands grasping for Carol's arms. Take her away, the king ordered, his voice firm. As the guards dragged Carol out of the room, Susan's expression turned smug. Justice will be served, she said, her voice cold and calculating. The king turned to Gabriel, his expression stern. Gabriel, I believe you're aware of our land's rules. Decide how Carol should be executed, stoning or burning alive. Gabriel's face contorted in anguish. Please, your majesty, I want her to go to prison, not be stoned or burned alive. The king's expression remained unyielding. Impossible. The only options are stoning or burning alive. Father, please! Gabriel's father spoke up, his voice firm. Gabriel, this is unacceptable. Laureen was my granddaughter and from the royal family. Carol must be executed. Gabriel's anger boiled over and he stormed out of the palace. The king turned to Susan. How should Carol be executed? Burning alive or stoning? 
Susan's smile was triumphant, her eyes glinting with satisfaction. Burn her alive, she said, her voice dripping with malice. She thought to herself, do you think it will come back to haunt me? Sorry, Carol, you're the one going down. No one must find out the secrets. The king nodded. So be it. Take her away. As the youths dragged Carol away, she pleaded, Please, your majesty, let me call my child and grandchildren to tell them what's happening. They don't know. The king's expression remained unyielding. No way. Take her away. The youths beat Carol as they dragged her to the execution site. They put tires around her neck, poured fuel over her body, and prepared to burn her alive. Carol's eyes locked onto Susan, filled with a desperate appeal. You know I didn't kill Laureen. You know the truth. Susan's smile never wavered. Burn her, she whispered to the youths. Just as they were about to light the flames, a shocking turn of events occurred. I'm sure you want to know what happened next. Was Nanny Carol really executed, or was she able to escape by some miracle of some sort? Will the truth ever come out? Please find out in the next episode. If you enjoy this story, kindly like, share, and let us know what and how you feel in the comment section. In case you are new here, please kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. Thank you for watching. Stay positive and don't give up on your dream. It will come to pass. We love you. See you in our next video.